Okay, today we're going to start filming building a smokehouse. I don't know if we're going to get it all in one video. Probably do this in a couple of parts. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to build this in detail. The plans are in my head. I chose this location because it had plenty of roots to dig in and I didn't want to get lazy so I felt like I needed to exercise. Not really. There was some roots here I had to fight through. I've already dug my four holes, but my firewood stack is right here. I feed my shed where I make pottery with this firewood. I'm going to use the same firewood because I'll stack my hickory and what I'm going to use for this smokehouse on this end so that it's close and I'm not toting it everywhere. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to make it six by six. That way I can put two sheets of tin on one side, two sheets of tin, two sheets of tin because they're in three foot panels, the ones that I'm going to use. Okay, I'm going to show you how I squared this up because start square it makes life a lot easier throughout the rest of the process. I don't usually go perfect with anything that I do, but getting a good close is, is worth a lot. So what I did is I dug this hole first. I come straight across right here on my tape measure and I got my six foot. All right, boom. Okay, I lined up my tape measure with the edge of this square that you see laying right here. So I know that that square is lined up pretty straight and this is probably not precisely perfect, but it's close enough for a small six foot building. And we're just roughing in holes. We're not getting precise yet. We got six foot there, so I know that my square is laid pretty well in line, this leg of it. So then what I did, I come over here. I didn't hook on my square, but I got really close to it to where I could tell that I was lined up with it, and I just kind of laid my tape measure beside it, and I lined the gap up even. That's about right there. Six foot's right there, so I punched me another hole. Okay, once you've got that part pretty well square, I can come over here and I know I got six foot there. I got six foot there. Okay, here's how you check it. When you go crossways, you're just getting rough. I've got about 101 inches that way. And that's backside of the hole to backside of the hole and that is not precise, that's good and close. I've got about 101 this way. That tells me this is pretty close to square. If it's exact, if I had exact corners, that would tell me I was exactly square or not. Anyway, that was just a quick lesson on squaring up a building. I've been building stuff my whole life, D done it professionally for the last 10 years, quit a year ago to do pottery, so I could be at home and do this kind of stuff. So, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to put these holes and I did not dig these three foot deep which is what most people want you to dig holes I want this to where if I need to move it I can take a tractor fork up under it pick it up out of the ground and move this building that is possible so what I've done is I've dug each hole around 16 inches deep I will put quick crete in this hole but I didn't dig it a big hole I don't want a lot of quick crete I just want enough in there that I can stand it up so I happen to have some four by fours. My father-in-law took down a swimming pool deck that was no longer in use. So we reclaimed these posts. I've got four of them posts. That's what I'm gonna use to frame this up. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do a lot of this off camera, but I'm gonna stop and just show you what I've done in stages. That way you can see it come together. Uh, so just stick with me. Okay, what I did here is I cut me four lathing boards exactly six foot. That way I know I get the center part of my post exact. Uh, this may not be the best way to do it, but for me working by myself, it was the easiest. When you've got some help, you don't. this is not the way to really do this. But what I did is I put one screw up here and I'm using screws so that I can easily back these out. I'm not beating and banging with a hammer. I prefer this Torx bit, they call it. 
I've got two and a half inch screws with a Torx head. Um, so what I did is I've got my first post right here level. It may not still be level, it's not. But now I did not stake mine to the ground. Let's see. To make this easier, let me release this. Because this needs to be raised up a hair so that it can push it that way. It's hanging out. Right there. Okay. Now. See, I can bump that. And with one on either side, I can get that pretty much where I want it. Okay. So what I've got to do now to level up this post is push this bottom in. I know this post over here is level and I'll be pushing against it. Yeah, that one's level. What I'll do now is I'll take my pry bar now I hold it on there and I know for my bubble I need to bring this bottom this way because as I swing my level that way, it goes to a uh, level. Now with this brace in here and those two braces, I can simply push the bottom of this post over without any fighting it. Needs to go a little more. Okay. Didn't want to go anymore. I'm at the back side of my hole. So what I'm simply going to do, I got that one straight. I've got some room to play over here. That's actually perfectly level. So now I have both of those posts level that way. I've got this one level this way. Let me check this one. The bottom of it needs to go out this way. come in the center now I'm level that way okay I'm actually level that way but putting these center boards right here around makes this pivot mower makes it a whole lot easier for me working by myself so that's just a tip that'll help you guys if you get out here and start building something on your own and you're struggling with stuff moving around Brace all four of these corners, and then once you start putting these boards, that post will wiggle like this. You can move the bottom, and you're not moving your whole post back and forth. It'll You'll get to level a lot faster. And I may have to dig... there probably gonna have to dig on the back side of this post a little bit to get that last one in but I'm gonna go ahead and put my uh, board up there now what's that <laughs> Uh, hey, little oranges. I went by over there. Grandpa called me and was coming in to get Daddy for being able to sit in the hall. And they wanted him over there. Of course, he always got some mess of meat out, sack of meat out. Or so he, it or something. So he helped them do it so that he can got some meat out of the deal. But he, he wanted knew how to fix that meat. Wade Copeland did too. I think it was Wade that they claim he was great. Well, I heard him, remember him talking about him fixing them at me. Thought I wouldn't know how to do it. 
But I don't know what people going to do, though. This, this disease is going on. I, I, it's just going to kill out a bunch of people before it gets Yeah, already has. I don't know what's, uh, what's going on over there in China either now. They don't tell a lot on that show, isn't it? What they do, I I get aggravated before then and turn it off. I quit watching it. Yeah, I've been done quit watching it. I've been cut the TV off a long time ago. <laughs> quit worrying about them, them and Facebook both. That Facebook's worse than the TV. I ain't never seen them mosquitoes like they are now. And that's got to have something to do with this disease. It's got to have something to do with them. Because when it gets this cold like it was this morning, you didn't used to, we didn't have to worry about mosquitoes. Now up in the day when it warmed up, they'd come out some. But these little rascals now, they ain't playing when they come around. Now no, their they... intentions is biting. They used to, they buzz around you and give you a warning. They don't. They don't want. They don't want to warn you now. They just fly up and bite now. That's that's their intention is biting, and they ain't giving. Used to, they buzz around. You could hit at him, knock him away from him, and run him off. I remember fishing and knocking them, hit at them, and they'd be gone. It wouldn't bother you for a little while. But you can get a brush now and go back there in the back, and you can't keep them off of you with one hand. <laughs> no, that's tough. That's that rain. They come them. from if you hitting on one one area, they they coming somewhere else. I don't know what they got to do with this disease, but they I believe they sure got something to do with them. Them well, and all they, these bugs. They go to spreading blood around. There's a good chance that they're spreading it. I don't know. I I ain't no doctor, so I can't say they are or they ain't, but I, I sure ain't going to swear that they're not. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I got that pretty well squared up and love them. <laughs> well, I better get back over there. My, my four-wheeler has put me down. It, I just can't understand it. It's been running good as long as I don't run it long enough to get it hot. But once it gets hot and starts popping and quit quits, you it ain't going to run until maybe tomorrow. It'll run a while before it gets hot. I don't know if that's a plug. I was going to get a new plug. I ain't done that yet. So the coil, but the heating... I mean, the electrical has got to have something to do with it, I think, with that heat. How long will it run before it gets hot? 30 yeah, minutes? A good little while. I it won't just, make the block, but this morning has I Has it got it. a fuel filter that stopped up, maybe? I think I changed that filter, but it's got a filter on it. But I, I made me get a new one. I'd remind me, I may get another one. I'd put a plug in it first and see, and then if it, if that don't do it, it's probably that coil. But now I may have a coil for that thing. A what? A coil. And I put one on that tiller, and that wound up not being my problem. And I think I got a good one. That could be the problem with that too, that coil. I tell it's you not. something else. Have you checked the oil in it? Yeah. Them Honda engines, if they get low of oil, they'll shut off. Well, I, that's something I, it has been a little, it's been a little while since I, maybe I ought to change it. That's what was wrong with my tiller. I didn't realize that I worked on everything and look and some plug had got loose and my oil had drained out and when it get down to below the sensor on that oil thing, it cut off. Well, I'll go check that oil now. I hadn't thought about it lately. A Honda engine, it's got to shut off. If it gets low oil, it'll cut the engine off to save the engine. And it's a good thing, you know, yeah, keep you from burning it, it up. If it does that, that's good. Yeah. 
I may, I'm gonna check it. It's, it could be that for sure. Well, I'm finna hunt me some concrete and pour it in these holes. All right. We got these boards all level. All the posts are level. You see me get that in there? That was Uncle Jesse. He come over here to investigate what we was doing. Told me a little about my grandfather. That's my uncle. And uh, his daddy, which is my grandfather, used to help his brothers. He was the oldest of the family, and they went around and helped all the brothers uh, smoke hogs. And down here in the south, you do it in the wintertime when they would kill a hog. Up north, the further north you go, they do it more in the springtime. But... It don't get cold enough in the spring to do it, so they would wait and do it in the late fall into the winter here to smoke a hog so the flies and stuff wouldn't get to it. But we got this. We're going to get some quick creep, pour some quick creep in these holes. Y'all hang with us. Thank y'all. What I do is put that in there dry. When it gets moisture, it'll harden up all the same. No need to have to tote water. If you want to and you prefer to do it that way, that's fine. It ain't gonna hurt a thing. But it's not absolutely necessary. You can put that concrete in there and dry. That ain't going nowhere. It'll harden up. Now, if you want it to harden up fast for some purpose, you know, you worried about it, storm blowing it. You may want to put water on it and go ahead and speed that process up. Come on, just double check here. Still, man, yeah, we still perfect. That's what I like. If you can read it that far, it's just old quick creep. 80 pound bag. So it's been sitting here. I've had it stored in my shed a while. It's somewhat hard, but it ain't it ain't too hard to use. But it was due to be used. All right, guys, I'm not in no hurry to get this built. I'm gonna work on this just a little alone here, there, and yonder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it alone till this cures and get set up like I want it. And then I'll get back to work on it. I've got to collect some of my wood up anyway out here. I've got some oak wood that I'm gonna use. 
Probably going to build me a salt box all the way across the back that's in there permanently. Put me a good floor in it. Make it good for the last. I'm probably going to get me some treated wood to frame this bottom out so that it don't rot. These are treated posts. So anyway, thank y'all.